Hi everyone, and welcome to the second part of SmartWorks episode of CBRE FlexCast. For this part, we're joined by Mr. Harsh Binani, who's the founder at SmartWorks. And uh, Harsh, thank you for joining us, and uh, you know, welcome to CBRE FlexCast. So, thank you, Pulkit. It's always a pleasure, and uh, glad to be spending time together today. As always. So quickly, Harsh, right? Diving into our conversation, um, what do you think is SmartWorks' biggest edge uh, over their competition today, or their peers today? Pulkit, when we started the business, it was obviously a pivot that we had to make very quickly to transition from co-working to create a new, a new category by itself, which is the managed workspaces for large enterprises. So fundamentally, when you're creating a new category in a market which is fairly unorganized, there is no winner takes all. It's a fairly large base on which each of us is trying to create a new opportunity and Quite frankly, the unique model that SmartWorks has created, when we internally think about our peer set, obviously we do belong to Flexspace, but given how unique the offering has developed over a period of time, the larger RE landscape is where we also see as a fairly reasonable peer set where we want to make a dent. And if I were to truly contextualize and look at Flexspace, um, a few unique things that SmartWorks has really done to differentiate itself would largely just be a the scale of our operations. Frankly, having the three largest campuses in the world with us, which is fundamentally in the largest flex space market in the world, clearly gives us a major edge in terms of just the product and the offering we can do with that scale. Secondly, the pan-India breadth that we've been able to create uh, is truly unique because you are that one-stop solution which is able to take care of a lot of national requirements of a lot of clients that we have. And quite frankly, the value pricing, world-class amenities that we're able to give in this campus-style format and really getting the type of enterprises we do for the tenures they are with us gives the business a fairly unique edge in terms of having a high predictability of cash flows, particularly from large enterprises who continue staying with us beyond their actual tenure. So these would be the three major aspects that I would like to highlight as truly unique to SmartWorks. Harsh, um, in my previous conversation with Nitish, he uh, you know, mentioned about SmartWorks uh, focus and investments in technology. So my question is that one, do you think technology is a game changer or a key differentiator when it comes to Flex offering or is it a good to have and has SmartWorks essentially made any critical investments? Uh, you know, in this, uh, in, in technology and making or buying some differentiating tech? Absolutely, Pulkit. Technology was a game changer prior to COVID, but in a post-COVID environment, it is stable stakes. Hmm. And I'm glad that SmartWorks was always very invested in creating a tech platform to enable us to grow faster in the beginning. We made fairly strong investments in this prior to COVID whether it was our mobile app, which is the platform through which any of the smart work occupier can engage with the larger campus ecosystem, whether it's accessing the building or consuming grocery or laundry or food, or quite frankly, just raising complaints or tickets for better service. What was essentially a good to have became a necessity in a post-COVID environment because this really enabled fast track adoption post-COVID. And you will agree that real estate, hospitals, healthcare are generally slower when it comes to technology adoption, but COVID has changed all of that. And now we truly believe that the entire tech layer at SmartWorks, right from identifying the buildings to managing the design and the entire project management to engaging the admin and the SPOC of a particular occupier. We've taken a 360 degree approach in making sure the tech layer, which is a mix of IoT-based hardware to software-based applications which can turn your desk into a smart desk, for example. We have created a very unique prop tech offering which is now being externalized through a new subsidiary of ours which is now going to start its monetization journey by deploying the same technology which has helped smart work grow faster, give a better experience to its clients to the set of clients we cannot cater to at SmartWorks. And we truly believe the offering that we have today is not a game changer. It is a necessity to ensure we deliver the delightful experience that SmartWorks is about. And interestingly, you mentioned this PropTech company. So if I have to understand this correctly, 
uh, so all this capability that you built in house now you've made a company out of that and that organization will be providing prop tech services to companies other than smartworks as well and it's going to be a 360 degree prop tech platform which takes care of technology needs of all stakeholders landlords at the beginning to better manage their buildings then move towards the client spoc and the admin who have to take care of the entire admin needs of a particular organization which occupies space and it would take care of varied needs such as complaint management and voice saying space management to finally the customer uh who would then be able to engage through the entire mobile application which could either be white labeled for the organization and all the features right from smart parking to access control to consuming shopping all of that will be packaged together and smartworks has been at the forefront of a lot of cutting edge innovation for example we were the first ones in the world to actually deploy an ai powered robot who was taking care uh it was called mitri which was taking care of the cleaning as well as the visitor management needs and we've always taken feedback to make the product offering stronger and more relevant and both of us being young also understand the entire needs of millennials and we're still learning uh, but we do know that this is here to stay very interesting i i think that bot was deployed at your hyderabad facility first That's right, right. The, yes and you know uh thanks for that inside harsh but i also see on the wall my right that there's a lot of amenities that are a part of this campus and perhaps every campus of smartworks so are they all functional and you know while we can we take a tour of them while we will be a pleasure to show you around and quite frankly amenities is the core of what smartwork offers as its product in a campus style setup and in our early days when we were trying to design the product and attract enterprises to come to smartworks one of the fundamental insights was you need happy and engaged employees throughout it's important that you retain them and create an entire ambiance which makes it a very attractive workplace for anyone to come and actually start working um harsh again you know speaking of all of these amenities that you've built and uh, a lot of things in this center are international standard as we discussed right now which makes me ask right do you know that there are a lot of international operators right now that are looking to enter the indian market because of the opportunity so do you think there's any barrier to entry uh, for these kinds of operators to enter this country that is one and do you also ever feel that you would want to go outside india as smartworks and open locations both are very interesting set of questions <laughs> and i would like to share my view individually on each hmm and the question is also very relevant for its time hmm and not limited only to the flex space hmm if you were to now think about the larger indian startup ecosystem hmm we are going through fundamentally a very interesting time hmm where you know that the next decade is well poised for india's growth hmm and the previous decade saw a lot of new global ideas come into india hmm but frankly if you think about the players who have really now scaled up and grown it is true that a lot of international operators across businesses have come in and taken a bite size into india correct and there are several successful cases of the ones who also scaled up and expanded but we truly believe that you have to indianize any great idea to make it very relevant to the indian market for an amazon you had a flipkart for an uber you had an ola and exactly that is what we realize that co-working as a product for india while global in its origin would not get us to a fairly scaled up outcome mm. and the biggest barrier for any international operator and today the industry is about 7 years old we being the largest in the space there is a certain vintage also that we've been able to build where you have also had a lot of international operators take presence here the learning curve that you need to understand the indian market whether it's designing the product from a co-working to a managed workspaces or pricing the product in a manner where it becomes value accretive to any occupier where you deliver cost savings yet deliver a great experience or design your entire experience keeping in mind the indian sensibilities all of that truly ends up becoming a major barrier beyond obviously the fact that if you're doing the business the right way it has to deliver value to all stakeholders you have to be profitable at a center level you have to deliver the right unit economics 
all of that goes along with the entire aspect of making sure that your barrier is the fact that you understand India very well and you've created an international product now which we truly believe is unique and why should we not have an aspiration that today India gives you a phenomenal opportunity to grow and scale up and we today are at 8 million square foot with fairly ambitious plans to scale up the platform to 30 million square foot over the next 5 years but why can a Indian product coming originally from overseas and getting morphed into an Indian product create a brand which can glow globally and while we feel the time right now might not be very apt for our international expansion but it will be truly a very proud moment as an Indian if you are able to create a services brand which can have its presence in a London, Paris, Frankfurt and we are ambitious to do this uh, and back in the day when we started obviously a lot of things which we were doing the first was the first and we were oftentimes questioned that really do you want to be so bold and daring and this will be the next big bold move I would hope so Absolutely and you know that again leads me to another question right Two, it's a two part right one is about the past and one is about uh, the future so what are your business what are your biggest learnings from covert business wise that uh, you know uh, lessons you've learned and things you want to adopt or things you've changed about your business after experiencing an event like COVID-19 COVID was truly a one-time event which fundamentally redefined the entire ecosystem and separated the big boys out from the rest of the crowd because it was a big test on the resilience of your business model a question which was of survival we are glad at that point of time we could invoke our animal spirits and use that as an opportunity to really scale up. Last year, for example, Smartbox alone must have leased more than 10% of India's RE. And we were already starting to see a lot of green shoots uh, during the entire COVID phase. The question was really, do you have a resilient model which can survive the downturn and really take advantage of the opportunities that COVID is laying down ahead for you? And a few learnings which stand not only for us, but we've seen that from a more broader perspective that a, a unique pillar on which Smartworks is built is to solve a truly unique problem. The tougher the problem, the more unique the solution is and that's how we've been able to get today. We are very humbled, more than 550 plus large enterprises, Forbes 2000 companies, companies which we used to dream of are today within Smartworks household and we do not want to start here. The party has just started. And very early on, we realized that if you're building a new product, solving a very tough problem, your old age principles of delivering profit, generating healthy cash flows have to be the discipline on which your business has to be built. Because profitability gives you a certain superpower, which really played into the fore for us during COVID of unlocking a lot of internal sources of capital, whether it's advances from our customers or securitizing a lot of our cash flows. And that's why many times when we get asked the question that you're a profitable unit yet you've been such a capital efficient player and you've only had one large institutional round yet you've been able to scale up. We've at Smartworks made profitability an obsession within the organization. It is at heart of what we try to do and question every day. And great businesses as one of our mentors told us very early on don't only focus on creating new resources. They also proactively think about how can we manage them better and how can we create more from what we already have. And we are just at the start of that journey, but some of these learnings fundamentally, while they were at four prior to COVID, but they really came into being post COVID and enabled us to grow as fast as we did. Well, Ash, um, you know, I think everybody admires your enthusiasm and your passion towards the sector and this business. And that's clearly one of the key factors that has gotten you Nitish and Smartworks so far. And it's always very um, engaging and insightful to have these conversations with you. So thank you for giving us uh, another one of them. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into this episode of CBRE Flexcast. We shall see you soon again with another eminent personality from the Indian flex industry. So until next time. <laughs>